Welcome back to the Bad Lions podcast. I'm sitting here in the lion's den in the warehouse of Poly Performance. Next door, we've got the Synergy Manufacturing uh, with the owner, Dave. How you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for uh, having me out. So uh, the morning started out a little poor for myself. Uh, ran the 22RE out of oil. And then uh, we took Dave's new sand rail new to him and uh we had a little issues with that out in the dunes but it was pretty cool watching that thing rip around yeah we uh we got out of the office a little bit today yeah absolutely uh but so i just wanted to uh i mean for myself i you know built my truck back in 2010 and ordered a ton of parts off of uh the website and i've been a fan ever since still run a bunch of the stuff and so uh just kind of wanted to get in uh learn a little bit about uh poly performance you know first how did you get into off-roading to start yeah so uh i grew up in northern california a little town called Folsom California it's not so little anymore but uh when i grew up there it was just a just a bunch of pasture land and uh not a whole lot going on and it's kind of the gateway to the uh, sierras up there sure so uh like rubicon trails not too far away you know basically you know, you can get to Loon in about an hour uh, from the driveway up there. Um, so my my four wheeling experience goes all the way back to uh, my very first Jeep trip uh, when I was about uh, eight years old um, in nineteen. Oh, this probably would have been nineteen eighty seven, nineteen eighty eight, with some family friends just first jeep trip when i was a kid we were out camping and we had to to jeep to get to the campsite and uh and we were riding in a family friend's old flat fender and my sister and uh, a couple of the other family friends there kids riding in the back bouncing along the jeep trail sure and uh man that was that was a memorable experience for yeah. me so um as i got older you know, uh, doing all the regular kid stuff, skateboard, snowboard stuff, but then getting into like uh, RC car stuff a little bit in the late 80s, sure, early 90s, and then uh, starting to read four-wheel drive magazines back then. There was no internet, you know? No. <laughs> um, so we're reading uh, Peterson's four-wheel and off-road and stuff like that. And uh, I grew up kind of as the internet was kind of coming on, so... Uh, 1994, 1995, you're starting to, to see some of this stuff online and, uh, turned 16 years old and was working at a pizza joint, uh, up there. Shout out to Pizzeria Classico. It was a great restaurant at the time. I think there's only one or two of them left up there, but. Is it still there? Uh, yeah. Old Town Folsom. Nice. You know, uh, so working in the back there, throwing pizza dough, trying to save some some coin and uh bought my first jeep and when i was 16 a 1991 jeep wrangler yj mm -hmm. and uh built that in my drive my parents driveway using uh parts sourced from a four-wheel and off-road magazine four-wheel parts ad wow yeah a little different than today huh things times have changed a little bit but uh that was the beginning of uh, my off-road kind of endeavors. If sure. You will. I mean, not necessarily the beginning, but for you know, because I started when I was a when I was a kid. But, sure. Uh, first kind of vehicle build of my own. Was and doing and that. did you do like as you're growing up? I'm assuming more trips to Rubicon and kind of uh, wheeling around. Not really. It was just kind of that that one trip and uh, just kind of was always into like trucks and jeeps after that just would always point them out riding in the car and sure. that sort of stuff and uh just magazines were a big deal when i was a kid so lots of mag magazine uh, magazine subscriptions mm -hmm. and uh doing that so um that was kind of like what we did in high school and i grew up in an area kind of where uh being close to the rubicon we had a uh, there was a club, an off-road club up there at Pirates of the Rubicon. It was kind of, kind of heavily known at the time. And uh, around that time, they had launched a website. Um, it was this, the internet forum, uh, 
is what we were using back then. There was no social media. Sure. And uh, the bulletin board in the beginning was just, I mean, it was just text lines, you know, and each time somebody would reply, it, reply it would be a text reply down. And then there's just stacks and stacks of messages is, uh, and, and replies. And obviously a, not the same bulletin board format that it is sure. today, but that's what it was. And guys were posting up pictures and showing, sharing pictures of, of trips and events and, uh, and builds, you know, so shout out to Lance Clifford and, uh, and the camo. They were running that website when we were just kids in high school goofing off. And, uh, and so, was, so that was like a spin off of the pirate Jeep club. pirate Jeep club became pirate four by four. Yeah. Their Jeep club website became the internet forum. Crazy. Yeah. And that, I mean, that form, <clears throat> you know, in comparison to our form, which has like, I think 1500 followers or, or uh, members at this point, Pirate 4x4 in its heyday was, I think, in the uh, a few hundred thousand, I believe. Fuck, I don't mean, I don't even know. Yeah, something crazy. Yeah, wow. So so you're kind of in the, 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 the your grassroots, if you will. I of, mean, I remember being on that site and posting that site and like, 96 maybe maybe 95 but wow. 96 97 you know <laughs> and it, it it kind of reset a few times and i remember i got on later on and like you know i wasn't mem member number one or nothing sure, like that sure. but you know first couple hundred when they when they relaunched the final time you know? sure and so so you you joined you were a member of the forum kind of building your your jeep tips and tricks kind of thing yeah just looking at other guys on how they're building stuff and pictures from just guys doing crazy rock crawling stuff yeah which at the time was like 35s were 40s no i mean if you had 35s <laughs> you had a big tire i mean i remember um after i sold that yj project i had i built a cj5 and uh dude i had uh yeah like a 30 like a 33 TSL SX oh, tire on there. Of course, <laughs> like you do. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And uh, that was a big tire for a little Jeep. Yeah, absolutely. And so you, you were wheeling that thing around. Uh, and, and so working at the pizza place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So after, uh, so 97, graduated high school and then uh, um, applied to a bunch of different colleges. None of them let me in. I'm not really a, uh, an academic there, if you will. Um, but somehow, some way, uh, weaseled in a spot at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, which is where we're at here today. And, mm -hmm. uh, I started school there as a materials engineering major is how I got in and, uh, was doing pretty good at it. Uh, and uh, just had a hard time in some of the uh, support physics and calculus classes and ended up switching to another major called industrial technology out of the College of Business there. And that's what I ended up finishing with. But uh, a lot of stuff happened in college that, that led us here to this point we're at today. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I was involved with the, uh, the off-road club there. The Poly Goats was like the college off-road club. So guys are you know, just a bunch of like-minded individuals building trucks and Jeeps in their driveways and carports. Um, and then I was also pretty heavily involved with the uh, Cal Poly SAE mini Baja team. So some of you might be familiar with that, but that's like a, a club and competition where uh, colleges complete or compete collegiately um, against one another for, you know, basically they give you a 10 horsepower Briggs and Stratton motor and pretty much don't have too many rules beyond that, but, mm -hmm. um, you basically build a buggy using that power platform and go compete on, you know, hill climb events and, uh, obstacle courses, braking acceleration. Um, there's a production and sales component to mm -hmm. the two, which I was involved with a little bit. Um, but man, I just recall learning so much outside of school from these other activities and clubs and stuff that I was involved in. Um, school was more of like a supplement to that mm -hmm. um, and just learned a lot outside the classroom. Um, while I was in school, um, I, I had some time off and worked at, uh, I went back home for a little bit, back up to Sacramento and worked at a, uh, 
a company called Rubicon Express in uh, in ninety nine, and started there just like you know doing on the assembly line, building control arms and stuff like that. And and uh, by the time I left there, I was sitting in a welding booth all day, mm-hmm. um, burning parts. And uh, left there, came back to school, trying to trying to finish that up. You know, uh, both my parents were elementary school teachers, so education was pretty important to them and going to college was like a requirement sure. to, uh, to not be disbanded by the uh, family there. So, yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, so I went back to try to finish school and then I was working at a, uh, a place called CCS mail order. Mm-hmm. So CCS is like, uh, the skateboard. Yeah. It's like a mail order skateboard, yeah. snowboard supply yeah. company. I don't think they might still be around today. I think they were out of business and then came back, but um, really honed some like sale, basic sales skills and phone skills there, just selling stuff over the phone through a mail order catalog. And, you know, from working in the uh, at RE there and being interested in the space and learning what I learned at CCS, I just kind of, I thought about, you know, it was maybe time to maybe try to try to do some stuff on my own. So um, had some Part supplier connects through some of the club stuff we were doing at Cal Poly, um, part suppliers. And, uh, man, I just, I remember, uh, locking myself in my room (laughs) that I shared with this guy named Pips. Shout out to (laughs) Pip Squeak. Um, and I just went in there with a 30 rack of Budweiser's and didn't come out for like three or four days. Sure. And just taught myself basic HTML programming and uh, launched my first e-com site in like early 2001, late 2000, early 2001, sometime around there. And uh, like I said, sourcing stuff through some connects I made at Cal Poly and then just slinging shit on on Pirate 4x4. Sure. I think I was the first paid vendor on there when they... Turned on their like vendor group page, and, and and were you doing it under Poly Performance at that time? Yeah, or? yeah. So like, uh, I kind of came up with the name. So maybe dipping in a little bit on the history of Poly Performance and, and the name. So um, Poly is Latin for many. Also, is I was going to school at Cal Poly, but uh, the I came up with Poly Performance Off Road Products was the uh, initial name of the business. So. Poly, many for Latin, so many performance off-road products. Sure. And then uh, over time, it just became Poly Performance. Mm-hmm. And then over time, a lot of people just refer to the company as Poly now. Mm-hmm. So <coughs> um, that's a little history. So, so you, so you were working at CCS, which for those of you millennials that are listening to this, that was a mail order skateboard catalog where you could choose decks, shoes, backpacks, clothing. And so you're you, you're seeing kind of the internet coming out, and you're you're like, hey, I better get on this train, and I think I could do it with something I'm interested in, which is off road parts. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I mean, we all knew the internet was going to be a pretty neat thing, you know. When we were first getting on in like '94, '95, we're just kids in high school trying to look at naked chicks, right? You know <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. So, using you know, your AOL, googling, <laughs> yeah, we're on AOL, using some cracked credit card information to make our accounts AOL users if you know who you are <laughs> and uh, downloading naked pictures of candy cantaloupes you know like sure. uh, that's what we were doing when we were you know 15 16 years old <laughs> yeah and so so when you started it what was your what was like the first few products that you were selling uh so when we first started selling stuff, we were selling a lot of like rod ends and rod end hardware um, parts guys were needing to use to link link their trucks. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, the threaded bungs, the Heim spacers, the rod ends. Uh, and then uh, and those are all, all the machine parts. Um, I got some help from a friend in college and uh, we were making the machine parts at Swayway, the shock company, on the swing shift at a machine shop where they were making all the shocks. And so uh, we were making some rod and hardware over there. And uh, that got me into the customer database there. So 
once we started selling some rod and hardware stuff like that, then I started selling like shocks mm -hmm. and then I started selling springs and then we just start making calls to, you know, basically everything you need to build a crawler, mm -hmm. you know, so selling, selling all that stuff. And then just as time permitted, just adding stuff to the site and, uh, you know, just trying to sell more stuff, seats, fuel cells, <clears throat> harnesses and, and as you're kind of going, you're meeting new contacts that can get you the, you know, parts. Yeah. So I was going to, uh, we were, you know, obviously you're on the internet, on the internet forum doing a lot of stuff, but, um, I was hitting a lot of rock crawling events too. Mm -hmm. So, uh, back in the day, Cal rocks was the big one in California. Shout out to big rich, um, who was running the show back then doing the rock crawling competitions. I'd go out there with like a. 10 by 10 easy up and a folding table and just hang out there with drinking beers and trying to sling some parts yeah. and meet some customers and watch the, watch the action. You know, I'm a, I'm a off-road enthusiast. So, sure. Uh, not super big on the competing side of things. You know, I like going and hanging out and drinking beers on the trail with friends and, and, uh, not being too serious about stuff, but I liked watching the competitions and being out there and, and uh yeah that was just uh you know that the sport was being born right then you yeah know? like you know warren was putting on some events back then that were pretty big and um but yeah like that's that was competitive rock crawling being born right around those right around that time and uh and so now we're talking like i mean still in the early 2000s mm -hmm. this is all and, and so how long would you say from when you started in, you said in 2000, when you started yeah, 2000, 2001, somewhere. So, yeah. and then how long before it, it, you know, started to kind of really take off with your. Yeah. So like, you know, working on the site and launching the e-com site in Oh one, you know, I, I remember pretty vividly like working on the site and goofing off on the forum and like, you know, just, sitting on the computer trying to work on the site and I'd pass out. <laughs> I remember one time in particular, I had passed out at my desk, my face on the keyboard and like woke up 5 a.m. the next day with, you know, Slayer on repeat <laughs> blasting and like the key, the keys from the keyboard were just imprinted on my face. Yeah. I went up and looked in the mirror, keyboard buttons all imprinted on my face. <laughs> I was like, damn, it's probably just, take it back just a click so yeah. I could make it to bed. At yeah, least, yeah, dial it back a know. bit, bud. But, uh, but yeah, so I was, uh, I was in school trying to finish, had the website going, like, and what I was trying to get at was, like, I remember one, one night in particular I had passed out, like, I don't know if it was the night that I passed on the keyboard or whatever, but, you know, I woke up to, like, an internet sale. A guy ordered a bunch of shit while I was sleeping. Yeah. And, like, for me, like, that was the that was the switch. Yeah. Like, okay. This is gonna work. This this could work. Like, look, it just did it. Mm-hmm. So keep working on the site, get the site out there, keep loading stuff up, adding products, adding lines, keeping keeping the customer support real tight. Um, and so at this time, I was still in school. I think I had. I don't know what the deal was, why I stopped working at CCS exactly, but um, I had moved on. I think they just wrote me off the schedule there or some shit. I don't know what the deal was, <laughs> but uh, I picked up a new gig. I was working at, uh, I don't know if you guys remember Gateway Computers. Yeah. You know, with the cow on the yeah, box. Yeah, the cow on the box. So that was like the OG Apple store. Mm -hmm. So before there were Apple stores, there was Gateway stores. And uh, I had I was working there selling computers um and it was all right gig i was pretty good you know i was a pretty good salesman at selling computer stuff and but it was it was pretty twisted because you know they're really riding your ass about like selling units basically they were encouraging me to take advantage of old folks and uh i had a I had a problem with that because you know you get an old lady walk through the front door right there like man i just i picture that lady as like my grandma you sure. know what i'm saying yeah, of course like, Man, I just felt so shitty about like trying to take advantage of these people and selling them stuff they didn't need, and so I had a disagreement with management there, and uh, 
they let me go from there. <laughs> this little reoccurring theme for me is being uh, let go from <laughs> these places of employment. Sure. So self-employment to me was the answer. Really, the only option sure. here. And so, um, yeah, I was working, going to school, trying to finish, slinging stuff through my Nokia snake phone, mm -hmm. cell phone. You know the snake game. That of was course, the, that was yeah. the snake game on there, yeah. and then uh, and then working at Gateway slinging computers. And I remembered another pretty vivid memory for me is like working at Gateway selling computers and having my cell phone ring for customers trying to buy stuff. I'd have to like run to the bathroom pretend I was gonna shit my pants. Yeah, you know, you didn't want to like, get caught. So I'm taking orders on like little three by five cards in this echoey bathroom with the bathroom fan running, sounding like I'm in a like, you know. <laughs> I don't even know, in some sort of wind tunnel. Yeah. You know, and so finally, to yeah, I got whacked out of that job, and I was like, shit, I, I probably got to sit down and lock this thing down and figure out how to make this work here. So, yeah, I just, that was the last real job I had was, was that, and then I just started pushing real hard on the poly performance game, and, and, uh, so at, at that point, like when you're at Gateway, you're you're like basically selling parts out of your garage or, or out of your bedroom. Yeah, out of my sock drawer. Out of your sock drawer. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then and then so at what point was it that you guys got your first like you were big enough to get a shop space or or Yeah, so uh I was basically building inventory and slinging stuff at home. My closet was full of coil springs. I had shocks stacked up to the ceiling and man, just pretty pretty gnarly and then finally I was hunting around here town and I met up with this uh, old English guy his name was Dave Dave Smith I think his name was and he had an auto body shop out near the airport and they had a little uh, 1200 square feet um, spot out there and I talked him into letting me sublease from him and he rented me uh, 1200 square feet which I shared with a friend of mine uh, shout out to Ken Hanna uh, he had a little, he had a company called Hannah Quality and he did like FJ stuff, built like rockers and sliders and bumpers and stuff for the, a lot of FJ 80 stuff, I think is what he was doing. So mm -hmm. he was, he had basically running a weld shop up front and then I had a, I had some racks and some inventory and a little office space in the back and you know, that's how, uh, that's how things got kicked off. That was our first legit spot. When I say Art. I mean, it's just me. Yeah. You know, and then uh, running that and selling stuff and trying to get the numbers up and then, uh, you know, figured out what kind of help I needed from there. Um, you know, you want to you want to spend the time doing the things that you're good at. Sure. And try to get some help for the things that you're not. So, you know, needed some help on the accounting side of things. So first first real employee to me was uh somebody in there to start helping with the books a little bit and uh and another guy to help answer the phone when i when i couldn't get to it mm -hmm. and uh that was pretty much it i'm you know i'm good at working with the vendors and working with the customers and doing sales and stuff like that so i wanted to make sure my time was allocated to that and uh, getting some help on the other things that i wasn't as efficient with sure so Sure. And so, so you built it up to a point and then where does, uh, synergy manufacturing kind of fit into? Yeah. So, um, around 2005, well, in the beginning, you know, what I had figured out about selling stuff online and, and whatnot, like, I'm not a super smart guy, but I, I try to pay attention and, uh, and, uh, try real hard right and so what i had just figured out about selling stuff online it wasn't like it's not like we were doing brain surgery here sure you know so i was like shit it's gonna be only a matter of time before everybody figures out how to sell stuff online so while i was pushing that and trying to grow that i knew in the back of my mind we really needed to be like making stuff and uh in 05 um decided to start another entity with a friend of mine and uh, we were we were basically making parts guys needed to build crawlers, you know, a lot of link suspension components, brackets and mounts and stuff like that for four link and three link and 
uh, trucks. And then in uh, 2007 was coming and we knew the uh, Jeep platform was gonna get reset. So decided to go real hard at trying to make some, some Jeep specific products. Um, you know, I had a pretty good history working in a competitor. Mm -hmm. Well, now, geez, I guess they're defunct. I don't even know if Rubicon Express is still in business or not, but. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, I knew making Jeep stuff was like a, probably a good route to pursue. So we decided to make some, uh, first started making some steering and suspension parts for the, for the JK platform. And uh, that was all under uh, the company named Poly Performance Manufacturing. And uh, that went really good. So 07, 08, 09, we're making a bunch of cool Jeep stuff. And, but we were selling it under the Poly Performance name. And so what was happening was that um, we were getting calls from like four wheel parts, four wheel drive hardware, Quadratech, uh, ORW a little bit, I think back then, and some other Jeep places all around. And um, a buddy of mine, John over at Quadratech, you know, he was like, he's like, hey, I'm making some pretty neat stuff, but you know, the Poly Performance is like a retailer and we kind of compete with that. Mm -hmm. So it's like kind of hindering our willingness to kind of really get on board and sure. get behind the brand. Yeah. So at the time we had our complete suspension kits um, a lot, you know, all these guys had different names for the stuff like the LCG, Extreme Duty, you know, all kinds of goofy names people were calling their kits. So we had uh, the Synergy Suspension Kit was what we dubbed our kit that we were making at Poly Performance. And uh, so I thought that was a good time to try to make that the brand. Mm -hmm. So 2010-ish, um, I think launched a whole nother website, Just Synergy, uh, B2B only. So we're selling to wholesale customers only, no retail, and trying to get what sales we could through Poly Performance, obviously, because double dipping gets you, can get you paid twice on that stuff. Sure. Um, so, but so, mostly, so to, you've got mostly the... to imp improve the reach of the brand. Sure. Right, so. But so you have the... So you've got the storefront, which is Poly Performance, and then you're now making you're making things and basically selling them to other competitors of Poly Performance. Yeah, we're selling them to ourselves, but also to other competitors. Got for it. Sure. Because you know, I get it. Poly Performance is only so big, right? Sure. So you really want to scale up and sell some units. You know, you need to be plugged into some better distribution. Absolutely, and and so. I, as far as I'm concerned, I came in to, you know, knowing about poly performance in, let's say, 09, maybe 08. And so at that point, my, I came in through the uh, pre-runner scene through Desert Rangers and, and uh, MDR, Desert Racing. And so I didn't r really realize that poly performance was, you know, I mean, I guess at the time that you started, there wasn't really pre-runners as there are now. But it mainly catered towards the rock. There, yeah, there crowd. was some stuff like that that we we did. But basically, the void that I was able to fill was like all these guys building crawlers all over the U.S. and all over the world, where they would call some of these off these off road race shops in SoCal. Like, you know, you got you know Billy Bob from Alabama putting Rockwell axles under his Toyota pickup, mm -hmm. right? He calls. Car tech or off road warehouse or whatever, you know, McKenzie's or whoever, mm -hmm. you know, trying to explain to the guy who only knows about V dub sand rails. Sure. Right. The guy has no idea what Billy Bob in Alabama putting, putting a uh, Rockwell axles under his Toyota needs. Right. But I knew mm -hmm. what, what, what was needed to do the project. And I'd put the, the build this together and the parts together and, not only being able to understand what the customer needed, but I mean, geez, it, you can only understand every third word that guy was saying on the phone. So <laughs> <laughs> it, just to add some complexity to this situation, but you know, you speak hillbilly and you, and you know what these guys are building by, sure. by some of these, you know, sites like pirate four by four. And I just knew what they needed. So I was, 
I put it together. Yeah. And helping guys. So super cool. And so it, 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 something that I was thinking <coughs> about on, on the way up here is like, so you guys have almost been in business for 25 years. And you think about like the, the changes from the Jeep that you, you started building uh, through now we've got these, you know, all these UTVs, all these, all these different platforms that have come along and it, it, like how, what do you think about just kind of where vehicles are going as far as, you know, I, um, I, through the course of time, like being in this business, like it's always like, you know, let's sell more stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's add, you know, let's add UTV stuff. Let's add, side you know let's add quad stuff let's add motorcycle stuff and there was a period of time there i want to say like uh 08 09 2010 even where we had added other divisions to our website and store to offer a lot of this stuff geez we were even selling rc car stuff wow um for a period of time and you know i i took some time to step back and also feedback from my staff you know their guys been with me here a long long time mm -hmm. and uh, I really try to listen to everybody's input and consider all all the things sure and uh, it made me realize that I was trying to do too much of everything and I needed to rewind back and you know be good at what you're good at mm -hmm. be excellent at what you're at what you're good at and you know I I know about rock crawling stuff, mm -hmm. and so cut all that other shit, and uh, just re rewound it back to our core business model of selling off, you know, rock crawler stuff. Really, sure. And uh, you know, since we did that, we're you know things things got better. So the customer experience is better when the guys are talking. The guys are just want to talk about rock crawler mm -hmm. stuff. You know, because that's what the sales staff's really into, and uh, and it just it's better for the customers. I'm okay selling less, mm -hmm. but being better at it. Sure, Does that makes sense. No, and and something that I mean, I, so again, my good buddy Tommy Mike James, that I know of Poly Performance because of of them, and so I, I look at it like those are buddies that I've had for you know a decade plus, and they work here and they're also enthusiasts, which, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if that's, that's part of the hiring process. Yeah, that's or... still the case today. You know, it's, uh, it's tough to do, but I try really, really hard to make sure the guys that are on the phones, mm -hmm. well, I try hard to make sure everybody is an enthusiast here. To of course. You know, obviously that's not the case, but, um, it's pretty much mandatory. Anybody on the phone talking to a customer, needs to be an enthusiast and uh, that's pretty much what we have today yeah. you know we don't you know we have a not a huge staff that's man on the phones but enough and everybody's an enthusiast and everybody likes to go out and wheel and and uh you know we got a good crew right now sure on that i agree yeah i mean we went out in in pismo today and you know we're out there with with cameron and and collins in the 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 uh shop uh bronco and it's mm -hmm. it's just cool to to see you know these guys are out there you know colin isn't wheeling his rig but you know he's got a, a pretty cool rock crawler at home and it's it, it i guess it's just refreshing to see because some people you know some some companies i mean obviously it's tough to do, but you get a guy that's not, uh, you know, invested in the sport. It, it, obviously, they're not going to do as good of a job for the customer or for you being the business owner. Yeah, you know, um, it's just, you know, having guys that are enthusiasts just make it way better. Mm -hmm. You know, it just makes it way better. And, uh, you know, I've, I've tried really hard to stick with that. And, we're pretty successful at yeah. doing that. I would say that most most of the guys here are are enthusiasts. Absolutely, so. absolutely. So, uh, as far as your, we we did a walk through th through the shop, and I'll I'll put up a video so we can kind of see some of that. But as far as your, how do you keep track of the magnitude of stuff that you have here? Um, yeah, both companies. So you, you know, you have a. Uh, you know, Poly Performance is really just a pick, pack, and ship type business, warehouse, inventory management. Um, 
We rely heavily on technology, so our ERP system is really good at at managing our business. It's an Oracle-based product. It's all cloud-based, so I could be anywhere in the world, jump on a phone, and our actually our phone system's all cloud-based too. So like, you know, I could be pretty much anywhere mm-hmm. answering calls and and making sales and doing that stuff. Same goes for all of the staff. Sure. Too, and so just really utilizing the technology that's available out there to run and manage the business. Um, the staff is such a huge piece too, because these are the people operating mm-hmm. the system, right? So, um, guys have been here a long, long time, like Kurt Richards, shout out to Kurt, Brian Cole, these guys that have just been here a long, long time running, running the back end part of the program and making sure that, the system and the procedures and things we've put into place are running and mm-hmm. functioning. And it's a lot of work just yeah. maintaining that. Oh, I can imagine. You know, not just work, it's just money too. It's just expensive. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, these, <laughs> I deal with a lot of companies that haven't invested in that side of their business customers and, you know, guys emailing over purchase orders on an Excel file or a Google doc or just in an email. And I was like, you know, some of these guys are just like, I'm like, how are these people running their business and not using real sure stuff? Yeah. (laughs) It's kind of crazy to me, but whatever credit cards clear. So I just zip it and move on. Would you say, I mean, what versus a, you know, uh, name the, one of your competitors, like what, what do you feel that sets you apart from, the other shops that you're competing against? Well, so that question is kind of twofold here because I'm gonna answer first for Poly Performance and I'm sure. gonna answer yeah. for Synergy. So Poly Performance, you know, the customer experience is really, really important to me. Obviously, you know, we have our website and we're getting sales off of our website and people are interfacing with that at that level and not talking to human. and. Um, but there also is the, the really important part to me is the customer interface with a human. Mm-hmm. So anybody can be on our site pretty much at any time. And we have like a live chat there. You can chat a real live human being. It is not any type of AI bullshit. Mm-hmm. You're not chat- going to get somebody in India. Yeah, you're talking here. to a real person. <laughs> um, same goes for texting through our, we have a text deal where we talk, we text a lot of customers, same thing. That's not AI. You're talking to a real human if you're texting anybody at our office. Um, so just the customer interface and the customer experience via web or through text or through live call is really important to me Mm -hmm. and just making sure that the customers are getting their answers to the questions that they're asking and getting, getting good feedback on the parts they're trying to buy and getting good help, you know? Sure. It's not just, hey, buy widget X and ship it, you know? It's like we're handling all parts of the transaction, not just the the order and the fulfillment. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, this isn't Amazon here. This is Poly Performance, where not only can we get your package and get it in a timely fashion, but you're gonna be able to get the technical support and service that you will not get at anywhere else like a place like Amazon. Or sure. So sure. And then for Synergy Manufacturing, it's a little bit different. You know, that's a B2B business. We're manufacturing product there. Um, I'm heavily involved on that side of the business um, from a lot of different uh, points uh, from new product development. You know, I'm sitting there Well, we sit in a group together deciding on what stuff to make. Um, but also on the sales side of things, on the marketing side of things, and on the customer interface. So um, bringing on new big distributors, that'll be me flying out and going on site with these places. Um, I like doing uh, some of the the trainings at some of the big WDs too. Um, So just the answer is kind of twofold depending upon, Mm -hmm. you know, because the two businesses are different, you know. Poly Performance is re- dealing with retail customers a lot. Synergy's manufacturing and dealing with uh, some other stuff. So. Sure. 
And I mean, as, as like I, I look at obviously the rock crawling arena and the you know, let's say the overland arena, which you know, like it or not, it's you know in in your industry that's a lot of sales there. And it's like obviously some things overlap, mm -hmm. but it's how do you? I mean, for as far as poly performance goes, it's, it, it seems that you kind of need to follow, obviously, some of the trends and things that are... Totally. Yeah, no, the whole overlanding thing has gotten pretty big. But if you stand back and look at it, like, these parts, you know, what we were doing 20 years ago was overlanding anyway. You know? you're, <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. You're loading up the Jeep to go up on the Rubicon for, like, three days, like... You're loading up everything, including the kitchen sink. Just got a cool new name. Yeah, so you call it whatever you want. I call it hanging out with my friends. You can call it overlanding. Don't matter to me. Yeah, sure. And and, and so all, I wonder, do you how do you, do you like pick and choose certain products that you're okay? Yeah, we should start carrying that. I think that's going to be good. Or no, you know, I, I don't think that's going to go anywhere. Do you have kind of that? Yeah, you know, there's a. This is a that's a funny question because there's always like an an argument between you know uh, you know if we want to bring on on a brand that's got that makes some really cool stuff but then we get some pushback from some other staff because maybe there's not and there's not good margin on it mm -hmm. so like hey we can sell this stuff and it's in demand but hey, we don't make very much money on it. So is this a good idea to bring this line on? So we will sit and have a talk about that and and uh, make a decision from there. And, you know, the, the stars align when you have a really, really good product with really good margin and high demand. And, you know, that's like the perfect brand. Sure. And that's, I use that point of view and that information from the poly performance side of view, side of, uh, point of view, at Synergy. Mm -hmm. So, I at Synergy, I pretend to be that B two C customer, that B two B customer, and uh, and try to set up the business model and processes uh, to supplement that and to 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 be what I think the customers would want. Sure. Not just making something cool. Hey, we're gonna make this really cool thing and. Shit, I hope people buy it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's more to it than that. Sure. And running both businesses really gives me a unique point of view on both of those points of view. Sure. And, and I'm sure on the, the manufacturing side of things, you can kind of pinpoint uh, problem areas for certain vehicles. Uh, you, were, you were showing me the, uh, the Super Duty Knuckles. Mm-hmm. And how you guys have 3D printed that, and you know, basically, kind of not reinventing the wheel, but base building a better product. Yeah, we're really good at at Synergy. We're really good at figuring out where the weak links are in, in things, um, and fixing them mm -hmm. and making them better. You know, uh, obviously, we make a ton of different stuff there, but a lot of the products are. Uh, steering related so a lot of these solid axle vehicles that have like the death wobble problem so we got really good at at fixing the things that attribute to that mm -hmm. and uh, so drag links tie rods ball joints steering stabilizer ceiling stabilizer mounts steering box braces and things like that that's that's a significant component to our business over there and just sure. basically taking what we've learned fixing one platform and applying it to the next platform and specifically any anything with a solid front axle we got really good at figuring out what the problems were and fixing um, another thing that we've been doing since day one that pretty much nobody else is doing is uh you know all the steering tie rods that we make there we make out of a uh, 4130 and it's just we're not just using chromoly steel and making a part like that. Um, we actually use the material for what it was designed for, which is uh, any high, high carbon alloys are are used uh, specifically when you want to do a secondary heat treatment process. So um, we use that series of alloy, and then we will heat the bars up, glowing red hot, and then we'll quench them in oil to harden them, and then we'll temper them back to the hardness spec that we spec out our engineering staff and 
doing that basically allows you to double the tensile strength of the material and uh, you know makes the makes the metal really really strong and you know I see a lot of guys using like aluminum and stuff for parts mm -hmm. right now um, man if that was really the right way to do we would be doing that mm -hmm. but uh, aluminum has a really big problem with um, fatigue so the carbon alloy has an infinite fatigue life below the yield point whereas aluminum does not so that aluminum drag link or tie rod that'll crack and break out of the blue at mm -hmm. some point um pretty dangerous yeah we well, yeah, i have a I'll, I'll post up that video of the the knuckle that you guys were testing yeah and then, so uh, jeep started making knuckles out of aluminum became problematic so we're just launching our uh nodular cast iron jl and jt uh replacement steering knuckle right now so that's been a cool new part that we've been been doing but um so if you're listening to this at some point in a few years or in a few months check them out yeah uh, saying cool new part <laughs> but uh but, well, but, and so i i was i was just thinking about so so products you know that you're you're selling through that you're you're not creating through synergy manufacturing but you're selling through poly uh you know not to throw anybody under the bus but will you not continue let's say the support on that product is let's say it's a shock uh let's say there's issues with it or the customer service is is slow will you just push other products just for the customer experience as far as is there anything that you guys do well there? on the poly side of things you know we're gonna we're gonna promote and push stuff that we don't have problems with sure right so whether that be pushing our own brand because it's really really good or you know, pushing another, another brand because it's good and it doesn't come back and there's mm -hmm. not issues with it. You know, uh, once that sale happens, you know, you can really start losing your ass. If there's a problem with the part, you got to deal with a return or a warranty or anything like that. So taking that point of view on the poly side of things, making stuff at Synergy that does not have problems, that has good performance mm -hmm. and, uh, longevity and doesn't have any warranty issues that was really important for me to design and and make stuff like that because that's what the customer wants and that's what the the sellers selling your product want too. yeah they want they want to sell good stuff they want to be able to make a few bucks and they want to not have it be a problem and come back sure does so, that answer your question yeah yeah i mean i i th i mean I, I maybe it was a stupid question but i mean obviously if you're buying whatever the item is if i'm buying this this koozie and it's not a good koozie you get calls you're just going to be like yeah we're just going to push this product yeah, we're not selling those koozies anymore yeah so that's pretty it's it kind of like self filters itself out but sure. man anytime you can figure that out as soon as possible the better absolutely right? so you're not wasting time and, and so i would imagine i mean so i'm an insurance guy so i get you know we're, we're a broker so we get all different company reps coming in saying you know sell our products so, so is that just non-stop here that you guys have company reps coming in saying sell um on the poly performance side of things a little bit you know we'll get some manufacturers stop by I mean, we've been in business so long, we're pretty much doing business with anybody that mm -hmm. we should be doing business with anyways. Um, and if something new is coming up, we're probably reaching out before somebody is able to come by. Sure. Uh, so that's pretty much that on the poly side of things. On Synergy, yeah, like, you know, there's a new laser cutter coming by every other week trying to get business here, a new tube <laughs> supplier a new machine shop, a new this, a new that. So like- You just have five minutes to talk? You're like, no, go yeah. away. Well, I say, first thing I go <laughs> is, first thing, the door is locked next door. So ain't nobody walking just in like that. And then B, when they do try to come, I go, did you make an appointment? Mm -hmm. No, all right, get the out of here. Yeah. You know? So yeah. you want to you wanna talk, like, we're busy. I, you know, you want to talk, I'm happy to talk to you. We got to make an appointment. That's my, so. I feel the exact same way. Like if you want to come in and talk to me and, you know, not necessarily waste my time, yep. but if you don't think my time's valuable enough to make an appointment, I mean, that what happened, are we doing? that happened today while we were at the dunes, a steel supplier came by trying to meet with me and our purchasing manager and like left some materials at the front office at the front desk and followed it up with an email. I haven't replied yet, but. My reply is going to be real simple. It was like, hey, thanks for coming by, but did you make an appointment? <laughs> so hey, you want to talk to us, like make an appointment. Sure. <laughs> and so uh, 
where, as far as looking in, if you had the crystal ball, uh, where do you see things going as far as uh, with poly performance? Like any, any, uh, is it kind of a keep, keep doing what you're doing and the same thing for, for Synergy? Yeah, so uh, the poly performance, you know, we got a pretty good recipe going right now. So just continuing on with what we got going on making sure we got the hot, the greatest and latest listed and we're pushing pushing the new stuff. Uh, one place that we're looking to to gain some growth is really pushing and working our, uh, our wholesale business. So right now we're gearing up to launch um, a deal where guys can kind of like log in and see live inventory and mm -hmm. see exactly what's available. So they'll be able to order um, do wholesale order kind of like how you would see some of our competitors on that side of things like Keystone, Meyer, Turn 14, um, Premier Performance, um, Comp Specialties, uh, those types of businesses. So we're going to be gearing up and, and trying to, to compete on that level a little bit. Um, you know, it's really hard to because those companies are so big. Um, but you know, our goal is to not really compete on price at the wholesale level. Um, our goal really is to compete with product availability, having stuff in our warehouse that nobody else does. Sure. Um, and our purchasing department is, is on top of that. Um, so that's one place we're looking to grow on the poly side, obviously adding more lines and adding new products on the, on the retail side is. Are you guys always looking like as far as so so for our uh, audience? I mean, mm -hmm. we, there's quite a few fab shops that you know we know of, and it's like are those the types of customers that you would looking to be add to add in? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Um, those for sure are guys that we want to take care of. You know, are really good at stocking some weird oddball stuff that has really long lead times. Like we're sitting here in our warehouse, we just took delivery of like five pallets of king stuff today yeah. you know you got like three five and four oh bypass shocks on this pallet like i don't know anywhere else stocking exotic stuff like that sure so you know fab shop can call up here and you know you can get a set of three five four oh bypasses the next day to socal I don't know anywhere else that stocks that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, and 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 again, I've got video from doing the walk around. I mean, this this warehouse is just it's like going to Costco or, or Home Depot with just off road stuff. It's like Toys R Us for uh, for off road folks. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> so it's it's pretty cool to uh, see. But yeah, and then, and then Synergy. So on, yeah, on the Synergy side of things, you know, we have a really good recipe going there. We have really good distribution channels set up and and flowing good so the goal there is to just continue making stuff we're we're kind of constantly behind the ball there we're kind of constantly always chasing the back order game here so the goal is to really try to open the production pipe and get on top of stuff and get our a and b movers in stock to to offer better fulfillment mm -hmm. um so we recently got some more warehouse space to try to do that so we're setting some stuff up with that adding some more equipment um and then just continuing to make stuff we think would be great that fixes problems mm -hmm. so um uh just recently in the last couple of years we were going after a bunch of uh super duty stuff replacement super duty steering is doing really good for us right now um and uh i think i got you to take a, take a look at a little project we're looking at. So we're doing, uh, we're, we're going all in on these uh, 05 and up Super Duty axle swap kits for all the Jeep platforms, maybe getting into some Toyota platform stuff. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, my, my, my biggest goal, if we can get through this project, I really want to get um, putting these axles, these 05 and up Super Duty axles in some of these Ram platforms. So, 03 to 13 Ram stuff and then 14 and up stuff. Um, big need for that on the front ends of those trucks. So it's a ton of work to get this stuff figured out. Mm -hmm. Tons, hours and hours and hundreds of hours of engineering time um, to get through it. Um, but I just think it would be so neat for, hey, here's this kit for like 
five grand and it's everything you need to put super duty axles in your Jeep or whatever. Yeah. Um, that's really a big project we're trying to get done um, for 2025. So all chips in on these uh, axle swap kits right now for us. So uh, really looking forward to, to getting through some apps, some applications with that. Right on. Well, cool. Well, so let's, uh, let's wrap it up. So check out Poly Performance Synergy Manufacturing uh, on our form. We've got a discount code. Uh, which is bad lines 10. And so feel free to use that if you like saving money. If you want to pay more, I'm sure he would be okay with it. And I'm not going to complain about that. But, but yeah, if you let us help you. Exactly. But uh, thanks, guys. And we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.